Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. Today, we're taking a look at the AOC Aegon Pro AG276QZD, which right now is the cheapest 27-inch 1440p 240Hz OLED gaming monitor on the market. Coming in at $800 US, AOC are offering the same LG W OLED panel as other variants for $100 to $200 less. So provided the performance of this display holds up nicely, this could be a great deal for gamers looking to jump into the world of OLED. In terms of specifications, what AOC are offering is pretty much the same as the other 27-inch OLED variants we've seen so far. This is a 2560 by 1440 panel using W OLED technology. It has a maximum 240Hz refresh rate with adaptive sync support. It has rated 0.03 millisecond response times, and it has true HDR capabilities due to its OLED panel. AOC aren't offering anything especially unique here, but when there's just one panel type available with these capabilities at the moment, you're pretty much limited by what that panel can do. The AG276QZD follows similar design trends to the other 27-inch OLEDs, but with AOC's own spin to provide something a little unique. The front is dominated by the OLED panel with standard bezels around all four sides, and the panel section itself is quite thin with a similar use of materials to its competitors. When you flick around to the rear, you'll see AOC's variation of the central box design with the thin panel extending outward from a central section where the components are housed. AOC have gone with an asymmetrical design for the center of this box where the stand connects, a decision that I'm not overly keen on as a fan of symmetry. There's some RGB LED lighting around this asymmetrical section as well. The good news is that if you don't like how this looks, it's on the rear where you'll practically never see it. Unfortunately, the base of the stand is also asymmetrical, which looks kind of odd, not bad necessarily, just a bit unusual. The stand itself is functional with all of height, tilt, swivel, and pivot support, plus the sturdiness of the monitor is good. The base of the stand uses metal with a nice grey finish, while the rest of the build from the stand pillar to the rear is mostly plastic. I wouldn't say this is the most premium looking of the OLEDs I've seen, and there's a few seams and the like throughout the build that ideally we wouldn't be getting from an $800 monitor, but hey, AOC had to shave some cost from somewhere to get that price down. For inputs, we have two DisplayPort 1.4 ports with DSC and two HDMI 2.0 ports. There's no USB-C input here, but there is a two-port USB hub that facilitates firmware upgrades. A bit disappointing to see HDMI 2.0 used here, which is limited to just 144Hz. At this point, they really should be HDMI 2.1 to allow for the full 240Hz over HDMI. Without USB-C, we also lack power delivery and KVM switch functionality, which is seen on some competitors like the Acer Predator X27U. The OSD is controlled through a directional toggle on the rear of the display. The settings menu is very snappy and includes a typical range of features including gaming stuff like crosshairs, a sniper mode, an FPS counter, and shadow boosting modes. This is in addition to typical color controls. I would not recommend using the crosshair though, as it could burn in over time. It's more of an occasional use type of feature. Like the other variants of this OLED monitor that I've tested so far, the AOC model uses a matte anti-glare coating. As I said in my review of the LG model, the first variant that I looked at, I think this is one of the better matte screen coatings. It is on the heavier side, so those that hate any coating grain may not be a huge fan here, but it does do a great job of eliminating reflections, reducing diffuse light, and preserving OLED blacks. And in general, these are my thoughts on matte versus glossy. If you are using this display in a brightly lit room, if there are light sources directly in front of the display, or if you can't control room lighting very well with blinds, a matte coating for an OLED is preferable, and the AG AG276QZD looks great in these conditions. In a dimly lit room with some ambient light, or if you can optimize light in the room by putting light sources behind the display, or by using blinds, a glossy finish is preferable as it will look richer and clearer. In a dark room, like gaming with the lights off, there's almost no difference between glossy and matte, with a slight advantage to glossy as it will have no coding related grain. The W OLED panel's subpixel array is not ideal for desktop usage, and it's more noticeable on a panel of this size and resolution compared to larger OLEDs where you may view them from a bit further away. When using a 27-inch 1440p screen, I think most people will be using 100% scaling and sitting at a normal desk viewing distance, which exposes the issues with the RWBG subpixel layout that is used here, in comparison to a traditional RGB layout, which operating systems expect when rendering text using modern subpixel rendering techniques. WOLED uses that additional white subpixel, which changes the way each color is rendered, and for fine elements like text, that causes a bit of blurriness and almost 
almost shadowing relative to a normal RGB subpixel LCD. I don't think it looks very good, and it's a noticeable downgrade over an LCD for text quality. As a result, I don't think this monitor is well suited to desktop use or productivity work, and that's exacerbated by the risk of permanent burn-in when using an OLED for desktop use, which often has a lot of static elements. You shouldn't be concerned about burn-in or the subpixel out for that matter when using OLED for content consumption, like watching videos or playing games, but if you have the same elements on screen for a long period of time, like say the toolbar in an application, that will likely burn in over time, which is why I don't recommend OLED as a productivity monitor. AOC are offering a 3 year warranty for this monitor which includes burn in coverage with an asterisk. According to their website AOC will cover burn in but only when the screen maintenance is performed in accordance with the instructions. When reading their user manual which reiterates their warranty does not cover non-compliance to these instructions, you are supposed to avoid viewing still images, watch videos in a full screen mode, and keep their panel maintenance features enabled, which they are by default. These maintenance features include logo detection, screen shifting, and pixel refresh that is run at regular intervals, similar to other OLEDs. AOC also recommend against using the display for more than 4 hours continuously. Now all of these instructions for how to maintain an OLED sound reasonable to me and stuff that I would typically recommend. You should avoid static images for long periods, you should turn on screen shifting and let the pixel refresher run as it should, but I'm not a fan of a company requiring two pages of instructions so users can comply with the warranty around burn-in. This seems like a way for AOC to avoid warranty claims and honestly I'm not even sure how buyers or AOC could prove that the instructions have or haven't been followed. So while this monitor does have a warranty that covers burn-in, that asterisk is very much important to note. Motion performance is exactly the same from the AG276QZD as other OLED monitors, so if you've seen my other reviews, this section will not be overly interesting. At 240Hz, this is an extremely fast monitor with an average response time of 0.27 milliseconds, no appreciable overshoot, and excellent cumulative deviation. The only notable difference is compared to the LG model, which had a more pronounced period of overshoot that lasts for one refresh cycle. The other models perform essentially identically. We also get excellent numbers across the refresh rate range, as OLED panels do not change in performance at lower refresh rates, unlike LCDs. So for variable refresh rate gamers, this is an excellent choice, as you'll get superb performance even at moderate refresh rates like 120Hz. We also don't see any overshoot artifacts at 60Hz, which was a minor issue on the LG equivalent. Compared to other monitors, there really isn't anything separating the AOC variant from the other OLEDs as I said. Most are around a 0.3 millisecond average response at 240Hz. This is also true for QD OLEDs, so don't expect any difference there versus W OLED. The biggest difference is to LCDs, and boy, that is a large difference. The PG27AQN is one of the fastest LCDs around, and even then OLED response times are significantly better. This typically gives OLED an advantage over LCD at the same refresh rate, allowing for similar motion performance to an LCD at a lower refresh. I think 240Hz OLED and 360Hz LCD is pretty similar visually, with the 360Hz LCD only slightly better. Similar story in other performance charts, OLEDs have great performance across the refresh rate range as OLEDs can maintain the same level of speed at any refresh rate. In contrast, LCDs typically get slower as the refresh rate decreases or produce more overshoot. So when we look at average cumulative deviation, OLEDs hold a significant lead over LCDs on average, and like the other graphs, the AOC monitor is no different to other OLEDs. The AG276QZD is a great monitor for 120Hz gaming, even though it's a 240Hz monitor, so if you want to pair this with a game console and play at 1440p 120Hz, that's a very suitable choice. 60Hz performance is also excellent, although due to the sample and hold nature of OLEDs, there will still be some level of blur here that you won't get at higher refresh rates. The AOC model has slightly more input lag than the other 1440p 240Hz OLEDs that I've tested, with the processing delay more in the 3 millisecond range compared to below 1 millisecond for the other offerings. While this isn't ideal, the AOC model is still a very responsive display overall due to its high refresh rate and lightning fast response times, still outperforming 240Hz LCDs in total lag. For people with extreme latency sensitivity, I would opt for one of the other W OLED models, but for most people, I think the increase to latency has little impact. 
Power consumption is as expected when displaying a 200 nit full white image, the AOC model is a little more efficient than the ASUS and LG models. Power consumption is a bit higher than the Corsair and Acer variants as it gets much closer to hitting 200 nits. The AG276QZD is a wide gamut monitor with 96% coverage of the DCI-P3 color space, which pretty much matches the color gamut of other displays I've tested with this panel. What we end up with is 72% Rec 2020 coverage, which is identical to other W OLED monitors and sufficient for HDR gaming. Factory calibration was pretty typical, actually a bit better than average for grayscale where we see good adherence to the sRGB gamma curve and lower than average delta E's although the color temperature was slightly too warm. As for saturation and color checker performance we get the usual issue with a wide gamut monitor where there is no sRGB clamp by default so SDR content is expanded and oversaturated. When we compare this to other monitors, the AOC model has the best factory grayscale performance of the 5 1440p W OLEDs I've tested so far, significantly better than the LG and ASUS models in particular. But when we get to color checker performance, the experience is pretty similar from the various different models. What was disappointing to discover is that, like the Acer model, the AOC model also lacks flexibility in its color space controls. AOC do provide an sRGB mode and the ability to switch color spaces, but this locks out other important controls like white balance. The Corsair and ASUS models have an sRGB configuration without locking controls, and the LG model does lock some features but also provides hardware calibration support. While this isn't ideal for calibration purposes, the included sRGB mode is actually very good. Grayscale performance is improved compared to the default mode, and the gamut clamping ability is decent at preventing oversaturation and delivering a true sRGB color space. So when we compare to other monitors, the AOC ranks highly in the grayscale chart, though not quite as highly as the Corsair, while for color checker it's also a strong showing. As for a full calibration via CalMan, we get pretty typical results here relative to other OLED monitors, which tend to be a bit harder to calibrate relative to LCDs due to their dynamic performance. sRGB and P3 performance ends up pretty good for applications that support ICC profiles, though for various other reasons like text clarity, I still wouldn't recommend an OLED for color critical work. I was surprised to discover the AOC model is the brightest of the five I've tested for SDR applications, maxing out at 260 nits for a full screen white image. This is slightly higher than the previous best, the ASUS PG27 AQDM, and much higher than the Acer or Corsair models. It also roughly matches today's QD OLED offerings. With that said, brightness is still lower than you get from an equivalent LCD monitor, so if you must have a super bright experience, LCDs are still the way to go. Pleasingly, AOC does include a uniform brightness setting with their monitor, which was added in through a firmware update after I first received the monitor. Without this setting, the AG276QZD would be a lot less usable for desktop applications as the brightness would constantly change depending on the average picture level, behavior that's very annoying. But with the uniform brightness mode, panel brightness is much more consistent and behaves as we've seen from other models. Minimum brightness is also extremely low from this display at just 2 nits. So low you probably won't use this display on its lowest setting. Viewing angles are excellent on this OLED as we've come to expect from this technology. You can basically view this display from any angle and get a great experience, plus it's a flat panel, so there's no issues arising from the curve. Uniformity though is a bit less impressive. While an OLED cannot suffer from backlight bleed or IPS glow, my unit did have a bit of a dirty screen effect when viewing grey content, which is where you can see some grey uniformity issues viewing mid-dark tones relative to an LCD that shows these tones in a more consistent fashion. While white uniformity overall was very good, the AOC model isn't that good for apps that have dark grey backgrounds. The other variants also had this issue, so it seems that this W OLED panel fundamentally suffers from this problem due to its hardware design. This AOC monitor is a great HDR display. This is due to OLED technology's inherent hardware qualities that are tailor-made for displaying HDR content. The key feature here is that each individual pixel is self-lit, meaning at a pixel level the display can turn on or off to accurately display everything from dark shadows to bright highlights. When the display needs to show pure black, it can fully switch off, giving us the trademark rich zero-level blacks and deep shadows that OLED is known for. This is in contrast to most HDR-capable LCD panels, which are not fully controllable at the pixel level. 
LCDs require a backlight, and for HDR displays, this typically means the use of full array local dimming, a technology that splits the backlight into zones. Whereas OLED can turn off each pixel individually, LCDs with local dimming can only turn off certain zones, encompassing hundreds or even thousands of pixels. This can still be effective for HDR content and look great, but it has some fundamental flaws in difficult circumstances. For example, when showing a bright and dark element close together, an OLED can control each pixel as needed, with a clean, accurate distinction between bright and dark. LCDs with local dimming need to masterfully control the zones to achieve the necessary distinction between bright and dark, and when the element is too small or not in the optimal position, the bright element can spill into the dark area within the backlight zone, creating ugly blooming artifacts. OLED therefore has the edge when it comes to displaying clean HDR content with minimal blooming or haloing. In some scenes, this will be the difference between raised blacks and deep blacks, such as for star fields and Christmas lights. At other times, OLED can have a brightness advantage for small bright objects within a dark scene. Subtitles will look cleaner on an OLED with reduced blooming, and generally OLEDs produce richer shadows thanks to its inherently higher contrast ratio. Aside from contrast and shadow detail, OLEDs also have other advantages for HDR. As there are no backlight zones, OLEDs are faster to transition between bright and dark with no visible zone transitions. OLEDs are much less likely to suffer from backlight flickering, although light PWM behavior, especially when using a variable refresh rate, is common. And OLEDs like this do not increase input latency in its HDR mode as they don't need to run a backlight zone algorithm. The downside to HDR on an OLED is brightness. OLEDs typically don't get as bright as an LCD with full array local dimming in HDR content, especially for large window sizes. This is true for the AOC variant, which despite having decent SDR brightness, falls back into the usual range for a W OLED in its HDR mode, essentially matching the LG, Corsair, and Acer models. The ASUS model continues to be the brightest for full screen HDR. 10% window brightness is also similar to other W OLEDs coming in at 651 nits, again well below the ASUS model, despite the AOC model actually being brighter for SDR content. The best options here continue to be LCDs with full array local dimming. The AOC model isn't bad or anything, but it isn't overly impressive for HDR brightness. Looking at brightness versus window size, there is little difference between the W OLED models, with the exception of the ASUS model that is much brighter. And this plays out when looking at real scene brightness as well. There really isn't that much separating the AOC, Acer, LG, and Corsair models in most HDR scenes. The order and exact brightness levels do change, but typically they are all in the same ballpark. Unfortunately, HDR mode accuracy is not amazing. Here we are using the display HDR mode, which is the most accurate. This setting does have good white balance, so it doesn't just crank up the blue light output to increase overall brightness at the expense of accuracy, but its EOTF tracking could use work, typically producing an image that is too bright for on-screen elements above 100 nits in brightness. This is a similar experience to the Acer and Corsair models, with weaker performance than the Asus and LG models. However, dark level performance is acceptable, and if we look at the color side of HDR, the AOC model isn't too bad, with pretty good accuracy and luminance. W OLED panels have much lower overall HDR color volume than QD OLED panels though, so if you want the best combination of color and brightness, then QD OLED is in the lead right now. Final section of this review is the Hub Essentials checklist, which looks to see if AOC are accurately advertising this monitor and meeting basic minimum performance standards. In the design section, I only had an issue with the use of HDMI 2.0 instead of 2.1, limiting the refresh rate over HDMI. The color section is largely positive for AOC. They don't advertise any brightness level on their website, but the actual results were strong for an OLED, and the sRGB mode is well calibrated. In the motion section, there were a few issues. While OLED panels are very fast, I do feel the 0.03 millisecond response time claims are a bit misleading, and unfortunately, input latency was a bit higher than I would like to see. HDR performance was great, offering true HDR capabilities, and in the issues section, it's the usual stuff for an OLED, the not ideal subpixel layout, and risk of permanent burn in. The AOC Aegon Pro AG276QZD ends up being a pretty good OLED gaming monitor, which at its excellent price point is certainly a product to consider. I don't think this is the overall best version of this type of monitor that I've seen, but AOC have done a pretty good job here and haven't cut too many corners to hit a new low price point for this panel. Despite featuring a price tag $100 to $200 US lower than its main competitors, the AG276QZD uses the same W OLED panel, which means that you get all the inherent great qualities of this panel. 
As it's an OLED, you're treated to lightning fast response times at a high 240Hz refresh rate, leading to excellent motion clarity for all types of gamers. Even if you aren't super interested in HDR single player gaming, the AOC OLED ends up a great option for multiplayer gamers too because of how fast it is. The other star of the show is its HDR capabilities, including deep zero level blacks and per pixel local dimming. With these features and a decent though not especially outstanding level of brightness, this monitor delivers a great HDR experience for gaming or watching videos. It is let down a little by its HDR accuracy in some areas, but it's ultimately still a true HDR product that outstrips many crappy cheaper LCDs that claim HDR functionality but don't actually deliver. While you tend to get these benefits regardless of what OLED monitor you get, it's also possible to fumble the bag and deliver not a super great experience. We've seen that in the past when companies forget to include key features like uniform brightness modes or poorly calibrate their display. AOC have avoided many of these pitfalls, especially with the latest firmware revision. It would have been nice to get features like a KVM switch seen on the Acer equivalent or hardware calibration seen on the LG equivalent, but as far as the essentials go, AOC have nailed it. There were a few surprises during testing as well, such as the high level of SDR brightness and great sRGB mode. Unfortunately, that high SDR brightness doesn't lead to a brighter HDR experience, and there are some downsides as well, like its mediocre build quality and slightly higher than normal input latency, but in general I was expecting a lot less from a cheaper OLED than what I've ended up getting. As I said, this isn't the best 1440p 240Hz OLED I've tested. That crown still lies with the ASUS ROG Swift PG27AQDM, with its higher HDR brightness and superior accuracy. But the ASUS model is also $200 more expensive in the US and $600 AUD more expensive here in Australia. So if you want a reasonably close experience with the same panel at a more affordable price, I'd definitely consider this AOC variant. I'd place it around the mark of the LG 27GR95QE and ahead of the Corsair and Acer models, which at $800 is very much a solid deal. Anyway, that's it for this review of the AOC OLED 27-inch 1440p 240Hz gaming monitor. I hope you all appreciated this in-depth look at this particular product. If you are interested in this monitor or any of the others that we've been talking about throughout this review, we do have links in the description below where you'll be able to check the current prices and things like that. Also, if you want to support our independent testing, the best way to do that is via Patreon or Floatplane. Links are also down below where you'll gain access to some cool benefits like our ICC profiles, our Discord community where you can chat about monitors, monthly live streams, plenty of good stuff there. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.